Julius, are you in any bands besides Goat Bomb? Yeah. What other ones are you in? What? Some other ones? You idiot. <laughs> I, don't, I don't actually know what we have a name. That's what I like. I'm trying to figure out what they're all called. So I like when I build this Battle of the Bands page, I can put something, but I feel like it's all gonna be like unnamed band starring. <laughs> Okay. That's you and Marilyn and Macy and Layla and Lila and whoever and else. And David. Hi. Hunter, do you know the name of the band that you're in with David and Madison? Coworkers. That's a good name. I like that. Is it because you were screaming so much at the assembly? <laughs> um, okay, I still have like three bands that I don't know what they're called, but I think that's all that you guys are in. Hey, Pate, what's the name of your band? Oh, shoot. Um, oh, either one. Paul X. Paul X. Oh, okay. Is that the one with Brewer and... Oh, okay. What's the one with uh, Marilyn and Sarah and Damari? Um, I forget. I what is it? Okay. Are you in that one too? Oh, okay. Princeton Dawn? Oh, 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 oh. Gotcha. That makes more sense and conjures a nice image. <laughs> okay, so the only one I don't know now is one with Lucas and Ronald and Garza and Tapio and Dom. They just had a one. Okay. I'll hunt Dominic down unless I see someone else in the hall, in which case I'll yell at them. <laughs> Okay, I should take a 10 minutes. Actually, I still got two minutes. To get what? Oh, really? Let's see if I can, like, bother anyone. I don't know if it like it is. I don't know if maybe it's supposed to be Bono, but it's weird either way. <sighs> Where are the others? Where are the others? All right. Well, overall, that didn't take too long to figure all those out. Less time than I expected. Are we still missing Kinsey? No, here she is. Okay. Hi. Hello. Welcome back. Thank you. Did you have a nice break? I did. Where'd you go? Um, I went to Camden this weekend for a horse show and then yesterday I was touring USC. Oh cool. How'd it go? Look good. Nice. Is that where you're trying to go? Yeah, I've already, I uh, just put in my enrollment deposit. Cool. That's very exciting. Yes. I just realized I didn't take attendance for last period. Cool. Uh, I really thought I did. 
I remember doing this. What's wrong with me? Okay, Julius is here. Kayla, Madison in person, Kinsey, and Isaiah. Okay, so we're going to start reading Fences today. I'm going to come over there with you guys because we're going to we're going to read it together today and tomorrow, um, Act 1. And whatever we don't get through, you guys are going to have to kind of get through on your own. Um, also, keep in mind that you're... Uh, oh, can I just bring my chair, actually? Now that I have a better chair. Um, what was I saying? What was I saying? Yes, the essay. Your essay is due Thursday. Um, for those of you who did theses and outlines, I gave you feedback. For those of you who didn't, I didn't. Um, but that is due Thursday. If you look on D2L, I put this stuff in the announcements. Um, we're gonna we're gonna try to read Act One. And you'll see that I posted two things there. I posted the full text and then I posted act one, which is more legible. It's literally just easier to read. Like when I look through the whole thing of like act one and act two, it's just a really bad copy and some of the words are cut off and stuff. So that might be our only option when we get to act two next week. Um, I have, I've searched high and low for a better PDF, but I can't find one. Um, I think that I might have this in an anthology though, in which case I could potentially just like scan in act two, but we'd have to see. Uh, okay, so we, we did a little bit of like intro work yesterday, um, just like going over sort of the, um, the broad strokes of what this is about. trying to find it, sorry. I have a million things open right now. So I'm going to look at the one that is just Act 1. Um, I actually would rather prefer a desk. I'm so fidgety today. I don't know what's going on. Um, so if you scroll through, it talks about the setting a little bit. Um, the setting is the yard, which fronts the only entrance to the Maxon household. We talked about the uh, symbolism of that name. An ancient two-story brick house set off, set back off a small alley in a big city neighborhood. The entrance to the house is gained by two or three steps leading to a wooden porch badly in need of paint. Rickety. A relatively recent addition to the house and running its full width, the porch lacks congruence. Sameness. It's a sturdy porch with a flat roof. One or two chairs of dubious value sit at one end where the kitchen window opens onto the porch. An old-fashioned icebox stands silent guard at the opposite end. The yard is a small dirt yard, partially fenced except for the last scene with a wooden sawhorse pile of lumber. Uh, blah, blah, blah. And op opposite is a tree from which hangs a ball made of rags. A baseball bat leans against the tree. Two oil drums serve as garbage receptacles and sit near the house at right to complete the setting. I don't know that we're going to read all of this stuff about the play. Um, and I wish I had like just a straight up list of characters. I know we have Bono and Troy. Hang on. Fences, character, list. I'm sorry, it's so cold in here. <laughs> I hate it. But like, I'm nervous to, to like put in a work request because what if they fix it and it gets way too hot in here and now it's getting hot outside. Um, so the characters we have are Troy, who is the protagonist. Um, he's a 53-year-old African-American man who works for the sanitation department. Um, he's a garbage man, basically. He's also a former baseball star 
in the Negro Leagues. His athletic ability diminished before the major leagues accepted black people. Um, he is hardworking, strong, and prone to telling compelling, fanciful stories and twisting the truth. He's the family breadwinner uh, and plays the dominant role in his 30-year friendship with fellow sanitation worker Jim Bono. I think it's Bono. Um, his, he's kind of the central character. His wife's name is Rose. He's got three kids, Lyons, Corey, and Raynell. And his brother's name is Gabriel. Um, Corey becomes sort of an important character. Um, he's a teenager. He's a senior in high school, just like most of you. Um, college recruiters are coming to see him play football. Rose. Um, oh, I'm curious. I didn't remember this. It's his wife and mother of his second child, Corey. Um, she volunteers at her church regularly and loves her family and requests that Troy and Corey build a fence um, in their backyard, which is supposed to represent keeping her loved ones close to her or something. Um, Gabriel is the brother. He was a soldier in the Second World War, and he had a head injury that required a metal plate to be surgically implanted into his head. Wow. Jim Bono is the best friend. He's usually called Bono or Mr. Bono. Mm, they met in jail, which is where Troy learned to play baseball. And Troy is kind of a role model to him. Lions uh, is the firstborn son, so not Rose's son, but Troy's son. Um, fathered before Troy's time in jail with a woman Troy met before he became a baseball player. And he is an ambitious and talented jazz musician. Uh, and then you have several like minor characters, which I'm not going to like ask everybody just off the top to to read these minor characters. We'll kind of come to them as we go. And we might not even like get to all of them. We're going to read today and tomorrow and then whatever else uh, we don't get to in Act 1, you guys will finish on your own. Um, but for today, it looks like we'll have Troy, Bono, and Rose. Anyone want to volunteer to play Troy? And everybody's going to have to read something for the record. Okay. You will be Bono. Somebody want to volunteer for Rose? Sure, why not? All right, lovely. I, I can be Troy. <laughs> I can't wait to tell Troy Green. Um, and I do just want to like go ahead and throw this out here. This this play obviously has to has a lot to do with race. Um, like we knew that from what we read yesterday. It does have the N word in it quite a few times. I do not expect anybody to say that. I don't intend to. Um, but just you can skip it or you can substitute a word of your choosing. All right, so scene one is 1957. Troy and Bono enter the yard, engaged in conversation. Troy is 53 years old, a large man with thick, heavy hands. It's this largeness that he strives to fill out and make an accommodation with. Together with his blackness, his largeness informs his sensibilities and the choices he's made in his life. Of the two men, Bono is obviously the follower. His commitment to their friendship of 30 odd years is rooted in his admiration of Troy's honesty, capacity for hard work and his strength, which Bono seeks to emulate. That's sweet. It's Friday night, payday, and the one night of the week, the two men engage in a ritual of talk and drink. Troy is usually the most talkative and at times he can be crude and almost vulgar, though he's capable of rising to profound heights of expression. For the record, if there is other language, I'll probably just say it. The men carry lunch buckets and wear or wear or carry burlap aprons and are dressed in clothes suitable to their jobs as garbage collectors. I ain't lying. He had a watermelon this big. Talking about what watermelon, Mr. Ran? I like to fell out. What watermelon, Mr. Ran? And it's sitting there big as life. Ain't said nothing. Figure if he was too dumb to know he's carrying a watermelon, he wasn't going to get much sense out of him. Trying to hide that great big old watermelon under his coat, afraid to let the white man see him carry it home. 
Now, what he looked like getting mad because he see the man from the union talking to Mr. Rand. Ain't said nothing. He told me to go down to the commissioner's office next Friday. They called me down there to see him. I ain't worried about them firing me. They're going to fire me because I asked a question. That's all I did. I went to Mr. Rand and asked him why. Why you got the white men's driving and the colored lifting? Told him, what's the matter? Don't I count? You think only white fellas got sense enough to drive a truck? I ain't no paper job. Hell, anybody can drive a truck. How come you got all whites driving and the colored lifting? He told me to take it to the union. Well, hell, that's what I've done. Now they want to come up with this pack of lies. Filed. Yeah. Brownie don't understand nothing. All I want them to do is change the, the job description. Give everybody a chance to drive the truck. Brownie can't see that. He ain't got that much sense. I think. <laughs> Same as you and me, getting just as much as we is, which is to say nothing. This dialogue is tough. Oh, look here. I know you. If you got anywhere near that gal, 20 minutes later, you'd be looking to tell somebody. And the first one you're going to tell that you're going to want to brag to is going to be me. I eye all the women. I don't miss nothing. Don't don't never let nobody tell you Troy Maxson don't eye the women. <laughs> Hell yeah, I bought her a drink. What's that mean? I bought you one too. What does that mean? Because I buy her a drink. I'm just being polite. <laughs> Look here, as long as you know me. You ever know me to chase after women? <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a distinct like lack of verbs here. <laughs> no, I'm talking about since I've been married to Rose. Oh, no, I'm talking about since I've been married to Rose. <laughs> All right, then. Case closed. What you watching where I'm walking for? I ain't watching after you. <laughs> Hell, you liable to see me walking anywhere. That don't mean nothing because you see me walking around there. Tallahassee. You can look at her and tell she one of them Florida gals. They got some big healthy women down there. <laughs> I feel like so offensive. Grow them right up out of the ground. Got a little bit of Indian in her. Well, okay. Most of them down in Florida got some Indian in them. <laughs> Legs don't mean nothing. Oh, God. You don't do nothing but push them out of the way, but them hips cushion the ride. It's the truth. Like, you riding on good years. Thank God the wife is about to come in. Uh, she enters in the house. She's 10 years younger than Troy. Her devotion to him stems from her recognition of the possibilities of her life without him. A succession of abusive men and their babies, a life of partying and running the streets, the church, or aloneness with its attendant pain and frustration. She recognizes Troy's spirit as a fine and illuminating one. She either ignores or forgives his faults, only some of which she recognizes. Though she doesn't drink, her presence is an integral part of the Friday night rituals. She alternates between porch and the kitchen where supper preparations are underway.
What you all out here getting into? What you worried about what we're getting into for? This is men talk, woman. <laughs> Would I care what you all t talking about? Bono, you gonna stay for supper? <laughs> pig feet? Hell, I'm going home with you. Might even stay tonight if you got some pig feet. You got something in there to top them pig feet, Rose? I'm cooking up some chicken. I got some chicken and collard greens. Well, go on back in the house and let me and Bono finish what we was talking about. This is men talk. I got some talk for you later. You know what kind of talk I mean. You go on and powder it up. <laughs> <laughs> Troy Maxson, don't you start that now. Oh, woman, come here. <laughs> Look here, Bono. When I met this woman, I got out of that place, I hitch up my pony, saddle up my mare. There's a woman out there for me somewhere. I looked here, looked there, saw Rose and latched onto her. There's a lot of rhyming in that little bit. I latched onto her and told her, I'm gonna tell you the truth. I told her, baby, I don't wanna marry. I just wanna be your man. Rose told me, tell him what you told me, Rose. I told him if he wasn't the marrying kind, then move, move out the way so the marrying kind could find me. That's what she told me. You in my way, you blocking the view, move out of the way so I can find me a husband. I thought it over two or three days, come back. Ain't no two or three days nothing. You was back the same night. Come back, told her, okay, baby, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy me a banty rooster. And I don't know what that is, and put him out there in the backyard. And when he see a stranger come, he'll flap his wings and crow. Look here, Bono, I could watch the front door by myself. It was that back door I was worried about. Troy, you ought not talk like that. Troy ain't doing any, wait, Troy ain't doing nothing but telling a, a lie. Only thing is, when we first got married, forget the rooster, we ain't had no yard. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, okay, I get it. There's a lot of people don't know they can do no better than they do. And now, oh my God. That's just something you got to learn. A lot of folks still shop at Bella's. Ain't nothing wrong with shopping at Bella's. She got fresh food. I ain't said nothing about if she got fresh food. I'm talking about what she charged. She charged 10 cents more than A&P. Hey, A&P, remember that? The A&P ain't never did nothing for me. I spend my money where I'm treated right. I go down to Bella, say, I need a loaf of bread. I'll pay you Friday. She give it to me. What sense does that make when I got money to go and spend it somewhere else and ignore the person who done right by me? That ain't in the Bible. We ain't talking about what's in the Bible. What, what sense it make to shop there when she overcharge? You shop where you want to. I'll do my shopping where the people been good to me. Well, I don't think it's right for her to overcharge. That's all I'm saying. Where are you going? We ain't finished this pint. Come here, finish this pint. The only thing I say about the AMP is I'm glad Corey got that job down there. Help him take care of his school clothes and things. Gabe done moved out and things getting tight around here. He got that job. He can start to look out for himself. Corey done went and got recruited by a college football team. I told that boy about that football stuff. The white man ain't gonna let him get nowhere with that football. I told him when he first come to me with it. Now you come tell me he done went and got more tied up in it. He ought to go and get recruited in how to fix cars or something where he can make a living. He ain't talking about making no living playing football. It's just something the boys in school do. They're going to send a recruiter by to talk to you. He'll tell you he ain't talking about making no living playing football. It's an honor to be recruited. It ain't going to get him nowhere. Bono will tell you that. Would it ever get me? Ain't got a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of. Times have changed since you was playing baseball, Troy. That was before the war. Times have changed a lot since then. How in hell they done changed? 
They got lots of color boys playing ball now, baseball and football. There ought not, there ought not never have been no time called too early. Now you take that fellow. What's that fellow they had playing right field for the Yankees back then? You know who I'm talking about, Bono. He used to play right field for the Yankees. Selkirk? Selkirk, that's it. Man batting, two, do we say point two six nine? I'm so, okay. No, I don't think so. Do we just say two six nine? Two six nine. Oh. Okay. 269. Understand 269. What kind of sense that make? I was hitting 432 with 37 home runs. Man batting 269 play right field for the Yankees. I saw Josh Gibson's daughter yesterday. She walking around with raggedy shoes on her feet. Now I bet you Selkirk's daughter ain't walking around with raggedy shoes on her feet. I bet you that. They got a lot of colored baseball players now. Jackie Robinson was the first. Folks had to wait for Jackie Robinson. I didn't seen a hundred people play baseball better than Jackie Robinson. Hell, I know some teams Jackie Robinson couldn't even make. What you talking about, Jackie Robinson? Jackie Robinson won nobody. I'm talking about if you could play ball, then they ought to have let you play. Don't care what color you were. Come tell me I came along too early. If you could play, then they ought to have let you play. You're going to drink yourself to death. You don't need to be drinking like that. Death ain't nothing. I done seen him, done wrestle with him. You can't tell me nothing about death. Death ain't nothing but a fastball on the outside corner. And you know what I'll do to that. Looky here, Bono. Am I lying? You get one of them fastballs about waist high over on the outside corner of the plate where you can get the meat of the bat on it. And good God, you can kiss it goodbye. Now, am I lying? If I'm lying, that 450 feet worth of lying. That's all death is to me, a fastball on the outside corner. I don't know why you want to get on talking about death. Ain't nothing wrong with talking about death. That's part of life. Everybody gonna die. You gonna die. I'm gonna die. Bono's gonna die. Hell, we all gonna die. But you ain't gotta talk about it. I don't like to talk about it. You the one that brought it up. Me and Bono was talking about baseball. You tell me I'm gonna drink myself to death. Ain't that right, Bono? You know I don't drink this, but one night out of the week, that's Friday night. I'm gonna drink just enough to where I can handle it. Then I cut loose. I leave it alone. So don't you worry about me drinking myself to death because I ain't worried about death. I done seen him. I done wrestled with him. Look here, Bono. I looked up one day and death was marching straight at me like soldiers on parade. The army of death was marching straight at me the middle of July, 1941. It got real cold, just like it'd be winter. It seemed like death himself reached out and touched me on the shoulder. He touched me just like I touched you. I got cold as ice and death standing there grinning at me. Troy, why don't you hush that talk? I say, what you want, Mr. Death? You be wanting me? You done brought your army to be getting me? I looked him dead in the eye. I wasn't fearing nothing. I was ready to tangle. Just like I'm ready to tangle now. The Bible say, be ever vigilant. That's why I don't get but so drunk. I got to keep watch. Troy was right down there in Mercy Hospital. You remember he had pneumonia, lying there with a fever, talking plumb about his head. Oh, out of his head? Plumb out of his head, yeah. Death standing there staring at me, carrying that sickle in his hand. Finally, he say, you want bound over for another year? See, just like that. You want bound over for another year? I told him, bound over hell, let's settle this now. It seemed like he kind of fell back when I said that and all the cold went out of me. I reached down and grabbed that sickle and threw it just as far as I could throw it. And me and him commenced to wrestling. We wrestled for three days and three nights. I can't say where I found the strength from, Every time it seemed like he was going to get the best of me, I'd reach way down deep inside myself and find the strength to do him one better. Every time Troy tells the story, he finds different ways to tell it, different things to make up about it. I ain't making up nothing. I'm telling you the facts of what happened. I wrestled with death for three days and three nights, and I'm standing here to tell you about it. All right. At the end of the third night, we done weakened each other to the point, or we done weakened each other to where we can't hardly move. Death stood up, throw it on his robe had him a white robe with a hood on it. He threw it on that robe and went to look for his sickle. Say, I'll be back. Just like that, I'll be back. I told him, say, yeah, but you're gonna have to find me. I wasn't a fool. I wasn't gonna look, I wasn't going looking for him. That ain't nothing to play with. And I know he's gonna get me. I know I gotta join his army, his camp followers. But as long as I keep my strength and see him coming, as long as I keep up my vigilance, he's gonna have to fight to get me. I ain't going easy. Yeah, you're good. 
Oh, hell, I shouldn't have told you that part. I should have left out that part. Troy be talking that stuff and half the time don't even know what he'd be talking about. Bono know me better than that. I'll explain. Oh, hell, I done seen him too. Done talked with the devil. Troy, don't don't nobody want to be here and all that stuff. Uh, Uncle Remus is a reference to the he was like the author. I don't think he was actually a real person, but um, all these stories about um, rare rabbit and rare fox and rare bear, um, and they're like just kind of like tall tales. Um, I used to have like a cassette tape of them when we were kids, but. Um, I think it's pretty obvious. Like I, I did mention before, and Troy is known for like telling tall tales and like really exaggerating stuff. So all the stuff about like wrestling with the devil and stuff is just like him talking. Um, so we're about to have Lions entering, who's the oldest son, 34 years old, Troy's son from a previous marriage, who sports a neatly trimmed goatee, sport coat, white shirt, tie what? Tyless? Tyless. Oh, like no tie. And buttoned at the collar. Though he fancies himself a musician, he's more caught up in the rituals and idea of being a musician than the actual practice of music. He's known to borrow money from Troy, and while he knows he'll be successful, he is uncertain as to what extent his lifestyle will be held up to scrutiny and ridicule. Um, can I get one of you guys to read Lions? Now, does anyone read lines? What'd you come hey popping me for? He must have been doing all right. I ain't seen him around here last week. Troy, leave your boy alone. He come by to see you and you want to start all that nonsense? I ain't bothering lines. Here, get your drink. We got an understanding. I know why he come by to see me, and he know I know. You ain't stopped by yesterday. You gonna stay for supper, Lions? I got some chicken cooking in the oven. You was in the neighborhood, all right. You tell the truth there. You was in the neighborhood because it's my payday. I'll be damned. I'll die and go to hell and play blackjack with the devil before I give you ten dollars. Yeah, I done seen him. Talk to him, too. You ain't seen no devil. I done told you that man ain't had nothing to do with the devil. Anything you can't understand, you want to call it the devil. Look here, Bono. I went down to see Hertzberger about some furniture. Got three rooms for two ninety eight. That's what it say on the radio. Three rooms, two ninety eight. Even made up a little song about it. Go down there. Men tell me I can't get no credit. I'm working every day and can't get no credit. What to do? I got an empty house with some raggedy furniture in it. Corey ain't got no bed. He's sleeping on a pile of rags on the floor. Working every day and can't get no credit. Come back here. Rose will tell you. Mattered in hell. Sit down. Try to figure out what I'm going to do. Come and knock on the door. I ain't been living here but three days. Who know I'm here? Open the door, devil standing there, bigger than life. White fellow, got on good clothes and everything, standing there with a clipboard in his hand. <laughs> I ain't had to say nothing. First words come out of his mouth was, I understand you need some furniture and can't get no credit. I like the fell over. He said, I'll give you all the credit you want, but you got to pay the interest on it. I told him, give me three rooms worth and charge whatever you want. Next day, a truck pulled up here and two men unloaded in three rooms. Man, what drove the truck gave me a book what what drove the truck give me a book i don't know say send ten dollars for it every month to be addressed in the book and everything will be all right say if i miss a payment the devil is coming back and it'll be hell to pay that was 15 years ago to this day the first of the month i send my ten dollars rose will tell you troy lion 
I, I ain't never seen that man since. Now you tell me who else that could have been but the devil. I ain't sold my soul or nothing like that, you understand? No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have trucked with the devil about nothing like that. I got my furniture and paid my $10 the first of the month, just like clockwork. Hang on a second. Where does he pay it to? What is he? Okay, okay. Yeah, I was very confused for a second there. Fifteen years. Oh hell, I've done paid for it. I done paid for it ten times over. Fact is, I'm scared to stop paying it. Troy line, we got that furniture from Mr. Glickman. He ain't paying no ten dollars a month to nobody. <laughs> I did not know he was gonna pop up in this play. <laughs> Ah, oh, hell, woman. Bono, no, I ain't that big a fool. Look here, I'll tell you this. It don't matter to me if he was the devil. It don't matter if the devil give credit. Somebody's got to give it. It ought to matter. You going around talking about having a truck with the devil? God's the only one you're going to have to answer to. He's the, he's the one going to be the judge. Wait, he's the one going to be at the judgment. What I tell you, Bono? The only time I see this guy is when he wants something. That's the only time I see him. What what that mean to me? Bonnie working. I don't care if she working. Go ask her for the ten dollars if she working. Talking about Bonnie working. Why aren't you working? I told you I know some people down there. I can get you on the rubbish if you want to work. I told you that the last time you came by here asking me for something. What's the matter? Are you too good to carry people's rubbish? Where do you think that $10 you're talking about come from? I'm just supposed to haul people's rubbish and give my money to you because you're too lazy to work? He's too lazy to work and want to know why you ain't got what I got. What hospital Bonnie working at? Mercy? I ain't got nothing as it is. I give you that $10 and I got to eat beans the rest of the week. No, you ain't getting no $10 here. I ain't got no extra money. Gabe done moved over to Miss Pearl's paying her the rent and things done got tied around here. I can't afford to be giving you every payday. Yeah, I got it. You know why I got it? I don't throw my money away out there in the streets. You live in a fast life. Want to be a musician? Run around them clubs and things? Then you learn to take care of yourself. You ain't going to find me going and asking nobody for nothing. I, just, I done spent too many years without. I done learned my mistake and learned to do what's right by it. You still trying to get something for nothing. Life don't owe you nothing. You owe it to yourself. Ask Bono. He'll tell you I'm right. Yeah, I can see that. Don't matter how you're going to eat, where your next dollar is coming from. You're telling the truth there. Boy, your mama did a hell of a job raising you. Let the boy have ten dollars, Troy. What the hell are you looking at me for? I ain't got no ten dollars. You know what I do with my money? Give him $10 if you want him to have it. I will, just as soon as you turn it loose. There it is, $76.42. You see this, Bono? Now I ain't gonna give him a six of that back. You ought, you, you ought to stop telling that lie here, Leon. Well, 
wait a minute. You're going to say thanks, Rose, and I'm going to look to see where she got that $10 from. See how they do me, Bono? Oh, there he go. Tell another lie. Time I see that ten dollars, he'll be owing me thirty more. I'm gonna pause just a second to point out a couple of funny things. One, I think it's very funny that and this is not a comedy, but there, I think there's humor in it. Um, that like every few sentences, he's like, "You can ask Mono," or like, "Isn't that right, Mono?" And like, never gives him a chance to say anything. <laughs> he's just like. <laughs> 100 it's so awkward i mean if they've been there for 30 years if they've been friends for 30 years he's probably like used to it by now but we would feel so awkward um and the other funny thing is that he's like first of all he's like i do have ten dollars and i have it because i'm not like i'm not crazy with my money i don't throw my money away and then he's like don't you have ten dollars like i don't have ten dollars and totally retracts it but then he's like you take ten dollars like he's not gonna give lions ten dollars but he'll give rose ten dollars and she can give it to him it's kind of like can you tell your mother that it's just so weird like the family dynamics are kind of funny i don't know why he don't go and get him a decent job and take care of that woman he got the boy is 34 years old Oh, that was Rose, but oh, let's not get off into all that. See this woman, Bono. I love this woman. I love this woman so much it hurts. <laughs> like, where's this coming from? I love her so much. I done run out of ways of loving her. So I gotta get back to basics. Don't you come by my house what? <laughs> Monday morning talking about time to go to work. Because I feel like this is probably dirty, but I don't uh, I was, yeah. You, Troy, stop it now. <laughs> stop it. Jen talk. Don't you come by my house. I done told you what I'm going to be doing. How uncomfortable. I feel like, I feel like a lot of friends don't talk to themselves that, or like don't talk to each other that way. Um. Let me see how long scene two is. I know it's not as long as scene one. We might be able to get through scene two, um, which has Rose and Troy and eventually Gabriel, who's the other son. Um, so I might need one of you guys to read that. Do I actually have to sing it? Really? Um, you can choose if you would like to sing. I, I, no. <laughs> Jesus, be a fence all around me every day. Jesus, I want you to protect me as I travel on my way. Jesus, be a fence all around me every day. Jesus, I want you to protect me as I travel on my way. Morning. You ready for breakfast? I can fix it as soon as I finish hanging up these clothes. I got the coffee on, that'll be all right. I'll just drink some of that this morning. That 651 hit yesterday. That's the second time this month. Miss Pearl hit for a dollar. Seem like those that need the least always get lucky. Poor folks can't get nothing. Them numbers don't know nobody. I don't know why you fool with them. You and Lions both. It's something to do. I guess they're talking about gambling. Probably. A lottery, yeah. I don't really know what the 651 is, but just using context uh, you ain't doing nothing but throwing your money away Troy you know I don't play foolishly I just play a nickel here and a nickel there that's two nickels you done thrown away now I hit sometimes that makes up for it you always come in handy when I do hit I don't hear you complaining then I ain't complaining now I just say it's foolish mm -hmm. trying to guess out of 600 ways which way the number gonna come if I had all the money these Negroes throw away on numbers for one week, just one week, I'd be a rich man. Well, you'd be wishing and calling it foolish ain't gonna stop folks from playing numbers. That's one thing for sure. Besides, some good things come from playing numbers. Look where Pope Dunn bought him that restaurant off numbers. 
I can't stand people like that. Man, it had two dimes to rub together. He walking around with his shoes all run over, bumming money for cigarettes. All right, got lucky there and hit the numbers. Troy, I know all about it. Had good sense, I'll say that for him. He ain't throwing his money away. I seen people hit the numbers and go through two thousand dollars in four days. Man brought him that restaurant down there, fixed it up real nice, and then didn't want nobody to come in it. A man go in there and can't get no kind of service. I seen a white fellow come in there and order a bowl of stew. Pope picked all the meat out of the pot for him. Man, it had nothing but a bowl of meat. He come behind him and ain't got nothing but the potatoes and carrots, talking about what numbers do for people. You picked a wrong example. Ain't done nothing but make a worse fool out of him than he was before. Troy, you ought to stop worrying about what happened at work yesterday. I ain't worried. Just told me to be down there at the commissioner's office on Friday. Oh, that sounds not great. Everybody think they're going to fire me. I ain't worried about them firing me. You ain't got to worry about that. Where's Corey? Corey in the house? Corey! He gone out. Out, huh? He gone out because he knows I want him to help me with the fence. I know how he is. That boy's scared of work. He ain't done a lick of work in his life. He had to wait. He had to go to football practice. Coach wanted them to get in a little extra practice before the season starts. I got his practice. Run it out of here before he get his chores done. Troy, what is wrong with you this morning? Don't nothing set set right with you. Go on back there and go to bed. Get up on the other side. Why something got to be wrong with me? I ain't said nothing's wrong with me. You got something to say about everything. First, it's the numbers. Then it's the way the man runs his restaurant. Then you then you done got on Corey. What's, what's it going to be next? Take a look up there and see if the weather suits you. Or it, is it going to be how you're going to put up the fence with the clothes hanging in the yard? You hit the nail on the head then. I know you like, I know the back of my, wait, I know you like, I know the back of my hand. Go on in there and get you some coffee. See if that straightens you up, because it ain't right this morning. So he starts in the house and sees Gabriel. Gabriel starts singing. Oh, the brother. Okay, uh, my brother. Uh, he's seven years younger than Troy, injured in World War II. He has a metal plate in his head. He carries an old trumpet tied around his waist and believes with every fiber of his being that he's the Archangel Gabriel. He sounds kind of crazy. That might be fun to read. He carries a chip basket with an assortment of discarded fruits and vegetables he picked up in the strip district in which he attempts to sell. Um, can somebody read Crazy Gabriel? I can do it. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, I'm not going to sing, though. But uh, <laughs> Kenzie didn't want to sing either. Uh, yes, ma'am. I got plums. You asked me how I sell them. Oh, 10 cents a piece, three for a quarter, coming by now, because I'm here today and tomorrow I'll be gone. Hey, Rose. How you doing, Gabe? There's Troy. Hey, Troy. Hey, Gabe. What you got there? You know what I got, Rose? I got fruits and vegetables. Where's all these plums you talking about? I ain't got no plums today, Rose. I was just singing that. Have some tomorrow. Put me in a big order for plums. Have enough plums tomorrow for St. Peter and everybody. Troy's mad at me. I ain't mad at you. What I gotta be mad at you about? You ain't done nothing to me. I just moved over to Miss Pearl's to keep out, uh, uh, to keep out from in your way. I ain't mean no harm by it. Who said anything about that? I ain't said anything about that. You ain't mad at me, is you? No, I ain't mad at you, Gabe. If I was mad at you, I'd tell you about it. Got me two rooms in the basement. Got my own door. Want to see my key? That's my own key. Ain't nobody else got a key like that. That's my key. My two rooms. <laughs> well, that's good, Gabe. You got your own key. That's good. You hungry, Gabe? I was just fixing to cook Troy his breakfast. I'll take some biscuits. You got some biscuits? Did you know when I was in heaven, every morning me and St. Peter would sit down by the gate and eat some big fat biscuits? Oh, yeah. We had us a good time. We'd sit there and eat us some biscuits, and then St. Peter would go off to sleep and tell me to wake to wake him up when it's time to open the gates for the judgment well come on i'll make some i'll make up a batch of biscuits troy st peter got your name in the book i seen it it says troy maxon i say i know him he got the same name like what i got that's my brother how many times are you gonna tell me that gabe Ain't got my name in the book. Don't have to have my name. I done died and went to heaven. He got your name, though. One morning, St. Peter was looking at his book, marking it up for the judgment, and he got 
and he let me see your name. Got it. Ooh, got it. Got it in there under M. Got Rose's name. I ain't seen it like, oh my goodness. I ain't seen it like I seen yours, but I know it's in there. He got a, a great big book. Got everybody's name, what was ever been born. That's what he told me, but I seen your name, seen it with my own eyes. Go on the house there. Rose can fix you something to eat. Oh, I ain't hungry. I done had breakfast with Aunt Jem Jemima. Oh, she come by and cook me up a whole mess of flapjacks. Remember how we used to eat them flapjacks? Go on in the house and get you something to eat now. I gotta go sell my plums. I done sold some tomatoes, got me two quarters. Wanna see? I'm gonna save them and buy me a new horn so St. Peter can hear me when it's, it's three o'clock. Hear that? That's the hellhounds. I got to chase them out. I got to chase them out of here. Uh, go on, get out of here. Get out. Better get ready. Uh, better get ready for the judgment. Better get ready for the judgment. My Lord is coming down. He got off somewhere. Better get ready for the judgment. Better get ready for the judgment morning. Better get ready for the judgment. My God is coming down. He ain't eating right. Miss Pearl said she can't get him to eat nothing. What you want me to do about it, Rose? I done did everything I can for the man. I can't make him get well. Man got half his head blown away. What you expect? Seemed like something ought to be done to help him. Man, don't bother nobody. He just mixed up from that metal plate he got in his head. Ain't no sense for him to go back into the hospital. At least to be eaten right, they can they can help him take care of himself. Don't nobody want to be locked up, Rose. What you want to lock him up for? Man go over there and fight the war, messing around with him. <laughs> get half his head blown off and they give him a lousy three thousand dollars and i had to swoop down on that is he fixing to go into that again that's the only way i got a roof over my head because that metal plate ain't no sense you blaming yourself for nothing gabe wasn't in no condition to manage that money you done what was right for him can't nobody say you ain't done what was right for him look how long you took care of him till he wanted to have his own place and moved over there with miss pearl that ain't what I'm saying, woman. I'm just stating the facts. If my brother didn't have that metal plate in his head, I wouldn't have a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of. And I'm 53 years old. Now see if you can understand that. Where are you going off to? You've been running out of here every Saturday for weeks. I thought you was going to work on this fence. I'm going to walk down to Taylor's, listen to the ball game. I'll be back in a bit. I'll work on it when I get back. What perfect timing. This is interesting. It was an interesting play for sure. And I, I feel like I want to watch the, the movie of it. It sounds like the old people in your family. All right, I'm going to let you guys go. I think we'll be able to finish Act 1 together tomorrow. It's not that much longer, so. Yeah. Bye.